Well, here we are, finally back on the roof. Um, as I talked about in the last video, I uh, sourced an air cleaner that'll fit my uh, real estate constraints here in front of the rad. Um, ended up finding one through the Wix filter website. They've got a nice uh, directory where you can search filters by size. And what I found was a filter for a 2018, I believe, Porsche Turbo 911. Uh, there she is. Should have enough surface area to feed this 6 liter. And, uh, got my receiving groove made for it. Got some small 3 quarter inch formed angle. I've got the sides of the radiator sealed off. So I've got all the air that comes in the front of the car is going either through the hair filter or the radiator. Yeah. Get that fitting in there nice. I've got my height gauge, which is uh, the old radiator mount. This is off my parts car. But I've got... Uh, Quite a bit of room there to work with, so that'll work out. Um, the radiator cap on these cars sets up a little bit higher, so I've got more than what's there. So uh, it always seems like you can always make it work with what you got. I'm a firm believer in that. These pieces I used on the side are leftover chunks of... These cold air intake kits I use on my swaps. As you can see, I've bought quite a few of them. But I uh, always end up with these uh, panels to wall off the air cleaner and don't end up using them on the swaps. They just never work. But they're 14 gauge and they've got uh, two nice bends on them. I guess I could take it out of the bag. Decently thick and they've got uh, some 90 degree bends on them. Just useful stuff to have around. But what I was getting at for using what you got is uh, I needed to uh, come up with a flange to seal the top of this air cleaner off. And I got no way to bend. I, I figured it needed to be at least a uh, 14 gauge because I have no way to get a fastener in the front here. So it's going to have to be pretty rigid bolted on the corner so it'll stay sealed in the middle and not flex on me. But, uh, I found exactly what I needed here. It took me uh, probably, I don't know, a couple hours of wandering around in the shop to try and find something that would work, but that drops in there perfect. By the time that cinches down, not putting too much pressure on that air foot filter foam and uh, give me something decent to build off of for the rest of the duct here. Um, I'll show you where that came from. It's kind of funny. But it's one of these braces out of this cabinet I've got. I don't know, three or four of these cabinets around here. But yeah. So use what you got. I believe the universe provides. So uh, This engine cover, I'm not quite sure the direction I'm going on it yet. I'm not in love with the straight sides. I've got to come up with something different. Um, the first subscriber that can identify what that is or what that came from or what I built that out of I will send either a hat or t-shirt your choice so in the comments what did I cannibalize to make that engine cover well I've got my upper flange built that's tough work slick nice fit perfect height for the Filter foam. 
I've got a base to start building my duct. Well, here's what I've come up with for a top for my air filter box. Make me a big ass vacuum cleaner attachment. I have a hard time if I don't have some sort of visual aid, but uh, through the help of CAD software, I can whip it up on here and not waste a bunch of material and time. Well, here's an old trick if you need to cut a bend in half. There's your line. Well, there's my tube diced in half. I also uh, notched that one already. So I've got the bottom notched out. Looking like it's going to work. Something like that. And uh, the inside of my bend I can just flip around and use here. It's going to work nice. Well, I'll get my vacuum cleaner attachment dialed in here. And uh, I got this side notched in to fit decent. And I've uh, got to transfer that same notch over the other side. I'll show you how to make a mirror image of that. All right, we switch cameras here so I can go hands free. Here's the uh, special tool you need right here. So what I'm gonna do is line that paper up on the corner here. So I've got a line of reference. I've got the top and the side for reference. Now I'll simply wrap it around here. And you need some grimy hands, which I seem to never have a problem with. And make a line on there. Just rub on there. Get her to go around the corner here. I just look for my scissors for 10 minutes. It's right here. He's bugging me. Liggity diggity. Who the hell is that? All right, so I started over here because when I fold it around the corner, I got this uh, bit that can move around here. So I'm gonna build kind of a flexible shape pattern uh, simply by slicing this. I'll come down like this and I need to take material out of right there it looks like, so. There we go. She's doing what I want it to do now. All right. I've uh, trimmed it out, kind of wadded it down where I want it to stick up. I got it sit flat all over. Now I'll cover most of this in tape so uh, none of these folds pop up. And I've got line of reference here, here, and here to match up on my other tube. All right, I pulled my pattern off and inverted it because I need a mirror image, not an exact copy. So all that tape's down underneath there. And there's where I need to notch. So we're getting there. My second piece laid in there nice. Notch turned out good, didn't have to fine tune it with the grinder at all. Uh, I got my little pieces here butt welded in. Uh, I use these panel butt weld clamps. Those things are a lifesaver. There's no way I was holding two pieces and keeping everything straight and trying to tack weld all at once. So those are very helpful. Got a piece of tin laid in the bottom and getting this front part here sorted out. A nice miter going on the corners. 
and I used the same method I've been dicing out of this pipe here but the same method as I did on the bends to get a straight line marked across that rubbed around the concrete floor uh, you get a nice straight line as long as you go straight and don't twist it at all when you're rubbing it or else you get a big fat line but yeah I ground it or rubbed it on the floor and got myself a line established and then used masking tape and uh, measured the width from there on out. Once I had one straight line established, I just kept working off of my previous cuts. So this front end's coming together pretty nice. Get pretty happy with it. Uh, all this tubing I'm using, unfortunately, is powder coated, so that's making it really fun. I uh, threw this whole thing in the blast cabinet and it just takes forever to try and get any of that to blast off. So I'm sure I'll end up grinding most of it. But hey, what do you do? Look at how nice that miter come together. That's nice. This one too. Anyway, I figured I'd give you another little tip here. If you're doing any sort of joint, even this was, if this was like a 90 or I guess this is sort of a 90, but uh, if you try to get a uh, butt weld on a corner to get a nice straight edge, um, I welded this up. I left quite a bit. Of, I built that up pretty good with weld so that I had some metal to work with and I'm just using my two inch uh, roll lock with 36 grit. Uh, don't grind like on the tip here until the very end. You stay in plane with this bend until you get it down where you want it until I was flush with the tube. And then I came from this way and you stay in plane with this side. And that goes the same if you're welding uh, 90 degrees, whatever. Uh, stay in that plane and it'll be a razor sharp point on the end. And then uh, at that point I just lightly dust that to give it a little bit of radius yeah uh, this material I'm using everything but the tin here is galvanized I tried to use the TIG welder it wasn't happening this stuff is so dirty and nasty be a lot of cleanup at the end but that's all right I'm used to that Get that front part welded in ground out rest of the powder coat ground off of her and now I'm moving on to the mass airflow sensor so what I've got is, this is off a of 03 Chevy 6 liter uh, express van. This bolts right to the air box on those. Uh, took me a little screwing around to figure out how that sensor comes out of there. Uh, you got to stick a flathead, small flathead in this little slit in the back. It looks like a airfoil or a wing or something in there. But uh, yeah, if you stick a screwdriver in the back, there's a little lock clip in here. That lock tab on the back. Get rid of that. But it just so happens this fits perfectly in a piece of two and a quarter tubing. I was going to use a, the LS7, LS3 style card math, but I think it's a little bit too long for the vertical space I've got here. So I'm going to punch a hole in the bottom of my pan there and weld that tube into the bottom and Stick her up through there. I got just enough room between, uh, well, the back side of the radiator there and the rubber boot that goes on to sneak this in here, and it'll be right in the center of the airflow where it necks down and should work out pretty good, in theory. If not, I'll just uh, tune it in speed density and use it for the IAT in there. Now, I know what you're thinking, and the answer is no. That was not intentional. I got my little tube welded on the bottom there for my mass airflow meter. And I uh, cut a paper pattern for the top here. Got a pretty good mess going. That means something's getting done, usually. But anyways, yeah, I cut a paper pattern and uh, voila. I made a top out of 18 gauge. She's got some shape to her. 
I rolled her up on the old English wheel, put a crown on the whole panel. So, here's my wheel. I built this a couple years ago. The old Duramax ring gear for an adjuster. After that, I rolled the uh, with my bead roll, I put some uh, raised areas in there. Give it a little uh, strength so it doesn't oil can. I'll show you my bead roller too. Here's my Eastwood Beast, beast Roller. Bead Roller. <laughs> um, I've converted it to a 12 volt gear reduction motor. Kind of a cool old housing I use for electronics. I guess that old uh, arc welder burned down a lot of houses and was recalled back in the day. I've got uh, variable speed here and foot pedal, forward reverse. But I did that raised uh, section in the panel, so the rubber wheel and then just uh, part of a step die. Uh, also, I've got the back side of this thing. Reinforce with angle iron or else they uh, they're a twist o flex machine otherwise. Oh, I sure do love having parts cars. No bees. This sucker's in nice shape. Parts of parts. We got our cherry on top there. I'm eventually gonna fiberglass all these welds and uh, bodywork this thing. I'm not gonna do it till I'm done banging around in the engine bay because I'll just have it screwed up. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with the way this metal laid out. Uh, an unintentional, that is really cool concave going on here on both sides. So. I'm liking that. Kind of learning as I go here with this tin work. I haven't done a ton of it. But, uh, learning more and more all the time. And with the help of YouTube videos, hopefully like this one, uh, I can get a little better at it. But yeah, trying to dial in the cheap metal skills a little bit. and It's kind of... Why the old Studebaker has been, has been a coat rack for a while. Um, it's kind of the uh, forever project. So need some more practice before I start on that old girl because uh, that car means a hell of a lot to the family. And that's a story for a different time. Still, I'm going to tin this all in here. And I think I'm going to do some panels that... I think I'm going to put the ECM right here in the fan relays and stuff. And I'm going to make a filler panel that kind of comes off flush here. And the back edge of it maybe curl out back to the fender. Just so I can stash stuff underneath there. I'll do the same on the other side to cover up the battery and hide all that junk. Yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, catch you all next time.